In your headlines, Fortis TCI announces the promotion of nine employees. And the government says that the removal of COVID-19 mandates will not come soon for the TCI. From the PTV Broadcasting Headquarters in Providencial is your number one source for news. I'm Erica Pinales delivering the latest from across the country this Monday, January 31st, 2022, right to your door. News Watch starts now. In today's top story, the Ministry of Health has launched a COVID impact survey to gauge how the virus has impacted the health and well-being of TCI residents. Details in this report. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant impact on households worldwide. The Ministry of Health and Human Services say they are aware that many persons are or may have experienced increased depression and anxiety and other effects on their mental and physical well-being as a result of the pandemic. This has been attributed to various factors, including feelings of isolation, loss of loved ones, media reports, virtual schooling, child care, fear of going into public spaces and contracting the virus. Some persons have resorted to or have returned to substance abuse due to the effect on their mental health. The pandemic has affected access to health care, which can result in non-communicable diseases remaining undiagnosed and those with these diseases not obtaining their medication or performing the necessary tests to keep track of their health status and readings, as well as complying with recommended treatment. It is in light of this that the survey was commissioned in collaboration with the Pan-American Health Organization, that's PAHO. The survey was officially launched last week and residents are being randomly selected and called to participate. Phone numbers have been anonymously provided by Flo and Digicel. Participation, of course, is voluntary and names and identification will not be requested. Callers will thus remain anonymous. The ministry assures residents that the information provided will be confidential and that the results of the survey will be used to guide health policies in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Additionally, the information gathered is critical to guide policies and plans in order to positively impact the health and well-being of TCI residents. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Alts. Shanty towns have been an issue for every modern-day elected government and the problem still lingers. The issue was brought up by members of parliament in the latest sitting of the House, and here's what they had to say. Elected members for Districts 8 and 9, Honorable Kyle Knowles and Honorable Randy Howell, shared similar grievances surrounding the growing issue of illegal dwellings and shanty towns across their communities, calling for some resolve to the issue. Mr. Speaker, I would like to touch briefly to the rapid growth of illegal communities that are expanding daily. I want my people of Wheeling to know publicly that I have addressed this matter with the, with the government with, with the government directly as well as other stakeholders because this is, a, this is fast becoming a national security problem, not just an immigration problem. That was elected member of Electoral District 9, Honorable Kyle Knowles, who called the issue an inherited problem and asked for the public's patience as they work toward a resolve to curb the nuisance. Meanwhile, Honorable Randy Howell, elected member for Electoral District 8, passionately expresses the need to implement measures that can immediately halt the unlawful constructions. Mr. Speaker, I'm referring to the unlawful construction of shacks in the bushes. The proliferation of shanty towns and the continued slashing of trees and the burning of kilns for the production of coal. Mr. Speaker, the residents of District 8 to Hills and other districts on Providentialis are of the view that the spread of shanty towns poses a threat to our national security and the health of this country. We collectively must put a stop to this. This must be stopped. He speaks to the impact that these illegal structures have on the communities in which they are constructed. The construction of shacks and resulting shanty towns is degrading to the communities. It's negatively impacting property values and is frustrating taxpayers since there is a general sense that their cries are not being heard. Therefore, I'll say whatever our efforts are to fight these growing problems must be fast-tracked. Mr. Speaker, we've heard of discussions regarding ways and means of eradicating these problems. 
and I'm aware of the lengthy process that it, I'm aware of the lengthy process to be endured to, by the finding necessary to make an urgent plea to the departments to act and act swiftly on behalf of the people of Blue Hills. It is getting scary out there. Illegal structures have been a major issue for the TCI for decades, specifically in the areas of Blue Hills, Wheeland, Q-Town, and Five Keys. And like the issue of illegal migration, it seems to be at the top of the agenda of every elected government since its increase. Persons who reside unlawfully in the TCI are mostly known to be the dwellers of such structures as they work to remain below the radar of detection in order to avoid deportation and answering to charges in a court of law. It's time for a quick break. More News Watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. Countries across the globe, like most of us, have grown weary of the dreadful COVID-19 pandemic. However, unlike the majority of us, have decided to ditch some of their COVID prevention laws. While your government says that that won't come soon for the TCI. Here's more. In response to other nations like Spain making a decision to treat the coronavirus like the seasonal flu and ditch the mask wearing and vaccination mandates, officials say when it comes to these things, it cannot be treated like a one-size-fits-all. Here in the TCI, we kind of cut our own cloth in terms of how we make our decisions. Yes, we get advice from PAHO, we get advice from Public Health England, we see what the CDC is doing in the U.S., we see what's going on across the world, but at the end of the day, we have to make decisions that are in our best interest. Yes, we've heard uh, representations of persons saying that maybe we should start treating um, COVID from a clinical standpoint rather than basically scaring the whole population out of whack because what is quote-unquote now something that might just be a seasonal flu um, impacting persons and quarantining them for anywhere from 5 to 14 days, once it shows up at the clinical level, then we deal with it from that standpoint. That's a, that's a view. But we'll make our adjustments as the information changes on the ground and once we are comfortable with what we are doing. Honorable Robinson says easing back on those most effective measures will not come soon for the TCI, as they have proven to be the most successful means of avoiding contraction of the virus, and the protection of our elderly and persons at high risk are still to be considered. He also says it is important to maintain stability when it comes to decision making in order to avoid the push and pull effect of these implementations as much as possible. There was a time when the great United States said, all right, well, we're going to remove our mask mandate. And within a two-week period, they were right back asking the same people who you just told, remove your mask, put your mask back on. So while we are bold in some areas, we are definitely be cautious in others because at the end of the day, while we appreciate our economic activity, if our citizens and residents aren't around to enjoy it, then it's for naught. The Minister of Health alluded to a time when the country went against the grain, which yielded some positive results. When the majority of the world hadn't gone to a 
vaccination visitor only policy. The Turks and Caicos was here doing that ahead of the time and I might remind the general public, we took a lot of licks for that. We were even said to be jeopardizing some $96 million by the Chamber of Commerce that they projected we would lose from September to December on visitors by implementing that policy. And then within a three weeks to a month period, the United States did the same thing and all of that went away and we've been basically doing very, very well with a booming economy. So we know when to lead and we have led in a lot of areas. So if you were wondering just how long you'd have to be walking around with your masks on, when it comes to the future of the vaccination and mask mandates, health officials say the TCI will simply march to the beat of their own drum, as it has so many times in the past. Fortis TCI is pleased to announce the promotion of nine employees to various positions across the company, which occurred during the latter part of 2021. We bring you the details. A total of 13 employees were promoted by year-end as part of the company's robust people management strategy. Fortis TCI promoted employees who were with the company since as far as 2008. The promotions range from local professionals, all with certifications and degrees in correspondence to their positions. Davino Mizik has been promoted from ICT Disaster Recovery and Project Assurance Analysis to Business Intelligence Program Manager. In his new capacity, Mizik is expected to provide solutions for customer-facing technologies, support IT requirements for renewable energy projects, and develop enterprise and departmental business intelligence. Sharon Ali Joes has been promoted from Manager of Business Services and ISO Management to Director of Business Security and Analytics. In her new capacity, she is expected to maintain, develop, and enhance enterprise-wide processes, technologies, and strategies to manage the company's security risk and project management. Ali Joes has been with Fortis for 14 years and has steadily progressed across numerous roles. Former Information Security Officer Bradley Jules has been promoted to Manager of Corporate Security, responsible for maintaining information and physical security programs that protect the company's assets. Jules joined the company in 2008 as an information technology specialist and was promoted to information security officer in 2014. We gather that he was a leader in creating cybersecurity awareness and executing the company's information security strategic objectives. Kayla Lightburn has also been promoted from corporate communications officer and outreach coordinator to senior corporate communications officer, community outreach and events. In her new role, Lightburn will serve as chief liaison for the company's corporate social responsibility program, including planning and execution of community and stakeholder activities. Stephanie Dean has been promoted from customer experience specialist to supervisor of customer experience. In her new position, she is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the customer service department, overseeing and supporting staff and all duties of the customer experience specialists to ensure that customer satisfaction is consistently achieved, among other responsibilities. Lavelle Ingham has also been promoted from Enterprise Resource Planning Technical Support Specialist to Senior ERP Technical Analyst. In his new role, he is required to maintain the company's ERP system and assist in system interface, integration activities, and end-user training while monitoring and maintaining Fortis TCI's SQL server and metering data environments. Corel Kelly has been promoted from Facilities Management Technician to Facilities Technician 2. Senderlai Methylis was promoted from Administrative Assistant in the Transmission and Distribution Department to Executive Assistant for the Operations Division. Tian Thomas was promoted from Resource Planning and Utility Analytics Officer to Manager of Business Development. In her new role, she will drive innovation and support the management team in strategic and integrated resource planning, finding transformative solutions to business and operating challenges. Fortis TCI is reportedly the only company with investors in people certification and is benchmarked against international best practices in people management. Commenting on the latest employee movements, Fortis TCI president and CEO Ruth Forbes stated, Fortis TCI is a performance-based company, and as such, we continue to recognize high performers and reward them for their work. We value our workforce and strategically create opportunities for professional growth and development so that they can continue to excel in a changing energy landscape. 
Don't touch that remote, we'll be right back. Coming up next is your weather forecast. Sister Craft Market Souvenir Shop. Come and visit us for your travel keepsakes, keychains, artwork, t-shirts, clothing, jewelry, and many more. We're located at the Lower Bight Gas Station in Providencialis, and you can contact us at 649-341-3070. That's 649-341-3070. Sister Craft Market and Souvenir Shop. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providencialis, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. Here's the latest in your weather forecast. Here's your weather forecast for February 1st, 2022. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk, on Tuesday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 78, low 73, winds northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For South Caicos on Tuesday, partly cloudy skies, high 78, low 72, winds northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos on Tuesday, partly cloudy skies, high 79, low 72, winds northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For Parrot and Pine Key on Tuesday, Intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 79, low 72, winds northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And on Providencialis on Tuesday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 79, low 72, winds northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For your sunrise and sunset, sunrise 628 a.m., sunset 539 p.m., and for your high tides and low tides, high tides 735 a.m., 801 p.m., and for your low tides 111 a.m., 156 p.m. And that's it for your weather forecast. We'll be right back with more News Watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We are creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV! We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. This story has so much valid information that we thought we'd run it again just in case you missed it. In an exclusive with Honorable Rachel Taylor, Minister of Education, she told Newswatch the importance of the youth policy in the lives of the youth of the Turks and Caicos Islands. Even prior to today's launch, we have already commenced um, looking at certain objectives as it relates to the policy and ensuring that our people, our young people are actively involved in the implementation of the policy. It is important because we have to take a holistic view of youth, not just looking at the academics of it, 
but looking at those who are also deprived in our communities. We have to ensure that our children um, gain an aspect of their lives where they build resilience, not giving up easily. We have to look at the safe spaces of our youth, ensure that we enhance these safe places, ensure that these children know where these safe places are, ensure that the places that currently exist, we put mechanisms in place to develop them so that they will be safe for our young people. It looks at um, economic empowerment. It looks at labor and employment. It looks at, I said previously, health. It also looked at um, how best we can um, partner with our schools, how we can partner with our private sector, how we can partner with our churches in an effort to achieve the objectives of the policy. Honorable Taylor explained that the Department of Youth Affairs worked tirelessly to achieve the youth policy, and they've committed to it for the best results to show through the youth. In terms of the program, if you would listen very carefully to what um, Dr. Charles has said, following the, today's um, initiative and following the workshops of our leaders, we definitely will go back to the drawing board, look specifically at the objectives and put mechanisms in place to ensure that those objectives are achieved. It's not going to be a situation where our team decide that we're gonna come up with a particular project. It's going to be the involvement of the youth saying exactly how best we can come together to execute the objectives. Honorable Rachel told Newswatch that although strategic plans for the youth policy and programs have not yet been put in place, initiatives have been implemented in schools which need to be harnessed and promoted for all students. As it relates to um, speaking to the skills gap, where employees have identified some skills as it relates to critical thinking, um, collaboration, team building, all of those will be captured throughout our schools. All those will be captured throughout our youth organizations to, in an effort so that we can bridge that gap um, that this um, National Skills Audit speaks to. Honorable Taylor elucidated on her feelings surrounding the event and the youth policy and that she's excited for the collaboration of the Ministry of Health and of Finance moving forward with the policy and the opportunities it's meant to create. I have a great feeling. The great feeling that I have is because those persons who will assist us in the execution and the implementation of the policy are present today. We have many stakeholders, private stakeholders. We have a lot of government officials, we have back benches, and then of course we have the youth of the country present today. So it's important that we not only involve them today, but in the continuous implementation, execution of the policy, that their presence are always felt. That is what makes it special. So moving forward it will be my happier days. The minister also told us that for the future, we should look forward to more opportunities from the youth policy, as well as collaborations and positive results. What we can look forward to is implementation. I, one of the presenters th this morning said, I will hold it as a Bible. So we promise that we will continue to work in partnership with our youth parliamentarians and our youth council members and the country at large in an effort to execute it effectively. She closed with giving thanks to persons who contributed to the implementation of the youth policy, highlighting its importance and the positive results it will yield in the lives of the youth of the Turks and Caicos Islands. I just want to say thanks to everyone who's involved, as I mentioned, and I want to say to the country, the youth policy will be made available on our um, website page. If you want a, a hard copy, you can contact the youth department. But I want all churches, all stakeholders to get actively involved. We definitely will be calling our various stakeholders at various meetings at different times as we continue to look at the various seven pillars. So I am looking forward to your participation and I'm definitely sure the youth policy will have the support of the government of the Turks and Caicos Islands. That brings us to the end of this edition of The Real News. I hate to leave you so soon, but of course, you can join us right back here every weekday at 6.30 p.m. and tap into our social media platforms at www.ptv8tci.com. I'm Erica Pinales, keeping you informed, updated, and affiliated. Until next time.